an educator, health advocate, and mother of three. These are just some of the terms used to describe our next speaker. She is a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, certified health coach, and founder of Road to Health, one of our silver sponsors for this evening. She is the chair of the board of directors for the Rhode Island Parent Information Network and chapter leader for the Weston A. Pierce Foundation and a gluten intolerance group. Speaking tonight about the hidden connection between our health and our diet, please join me in welcoming Kathleen DiChiara to the stage. doesn't lie. Tonight I invite you to explore nutrition from a functional perspective. We'll be using symptoms as our guide. But first I'm going to share a quote with you that will help set the stage. The truth will set you free, but first it will piss you off. <laughs> and so with that in mind, we're going to explore the role of food in chronic conditions. Let's start by looking at the data. 133 Ameri million Americans have chronic disease. That's 45% of the population, one out of two adults. By 2020, it's projected to reach 157 million, and 81 million of those people will have multiple conditions at the same time. Seven out of 10 deaths are related to chronic disease, which, by the way, is preventable. Every 30 seconds, a lower limb is amputated as a consequence of diabetes. 81% of hospital admissions, 91% of prescriptions, and 76% of uh, doctor visits. This is the story of one family. In an eight-year period, they had all of these conditions at the same time. You can look at just the highlighted ones and understand what the physical and emotional burden must have been. That was my family. And we were practicing all of the so-called healthy lifestyle choices. But what we didn't understand was the hidden connection. Food intolerances were at the root of our chronic diseases. A delayed immune response to the foods we were eating every day. And while no one thing will determine whether or not you develop a chronic disease, diet-induced inflammation is a real factor. And unrecognized food sensitivities play a role in many disorders. We also learned that our microbiota, our inner ecosystem, had been disrupted. This interferes with the body's ability to uh, interact with our environment. And this includes our food. We were having an immune response to otherwise harmless substances, like the top allergens, soy, wheat, dairy, corn, sugar, and more. And these allergens are everywhere. They line the shelves of every grocery food store in every market. In fact, 80% of the foods available today didn't exist 100 years ago. Convenience has trumped nourishment. Instead of eating like our ancestors, we have changed our diet. We have newcomers to the diet, genetically modified organisms, food chemicals, things like glyphosate, MSG, aspartame. These are just a few of the things we've done to alter our food. Our ancestors ate from the season. We have separated ourselves from our food source. We no longer nourish ourselves, we don't cook at home. We deter use convenience, time, and price to determine what we'll eat next. <laughs> We've created a new normal. And I'll warn all the mothers, if you stop bringing your children to fast food restaurants or showing up at the soccer field without munchkins, you will be viewed as radical or insane. <laughs> <laughs> but we could probably argue that the other way around. So not all food is created equal. Products that come from animals held in confinement, eating inflammatory grains like soy and corn, are not the same as animals on pasture eating grass. Quality really does matter. And a hidden connection for us became an unhealthy truth. And like all truth, it must pass through three different phases, and diet is no different. And I understand changing diet is difficult. These are your three phases. Ridicule, violent opposition, and finally acceptance. You'll spend most of your time in phase two, particularly if you have children. 
<laughs> so you have to start by shifting your focus to healing the body, understanding your unique physiology. That's the root of the foundation of functional nutrition. The body really can heal, and we can strengthen the body's ability to heal using some basic principles I'll outline here. I call it eliminating irritants, chemicals, and foods that create inflammation in the body, adding in nutrient-dense food to your plate, and treating health instead of disease. When you change your health, you change your life. You change your family's life, and you change your community. I hope that I can inspire people here tonight to find the hidden connection in their chronic disease. Thank you.